Great, thanks for coming. Uh, welcome. This is the practical PHP deployment with Jenkins. We're going to talk about PHP. So, yay! Uh, my name's Adam Culp. Uh, you can uh, find me on Twitter at Adam Culp. I, I tweet quite often. I, I am a regular speaker at conferences, mostly PHP conferences, but uh, but I do a lot of uh, a lot of conference speaking. So please. Uh, you know, if you're interested, uh, give me a follow. I'm a PHP 5.3 certified engineer, and I work for Zen Technologies. So uh, with Zen Technologies, I actually uh, go out and talk with customers. I specialize in refactoring. Refactoring is kind of my secret power, my superpower. Uh, I love refactoring. And in PHP, there's a lot of legacy code out there that needs refactored. So I go out to companies, and I help them modernize their code to be newer, or I help uh, companies start on the right foot and develop PHP the right way from the beginning, starting with their architecture. And not architect by architecture, I'm not talking about the infrastructure of the hardware and the networking necessarily. It's more about the application and the, and the design of the application. Um, I'm also on the Zen Certification Advisory Board. Um, I help create the Zen Framework Certification Exam. So anybody uh, doing the Zen Framework Certification Exam, I, I contributed to that. I'm also the organizer of the SoFlow PHP, South Florida PHP User Group. Uh, we have about 650 members from West Palm Beach down to Miami. If you're ever in South Florida, look us up. Uh, we do a lot of meetups every single month, always busy. And uh, so check us out. Chances are we have a meetup during the time that you're there, if, you, if you're there. I've also organized a Sunshine PHP conference. Anybody heard of that? Sunshine PHP? Woohoo! yeah. Uh, it's coming up in February. We do it every year in February. It's one of the, one of the largest PHP community-based conferences. And uh, we get about 250 attendees. It's coming up in February. So depending on where you live, I could think of a lot worse places to be than Miami in February, right? So come on down and join us. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we're actually getting ready to announce our speakers here within the next week. I'm a long distance runner. I run ultra marathons. And for those of you who don't know what that is, a marathon is 26.2 miles. An ultra marathon is larger than 26.2 miles. My favorite distance is 50 miles or 100K, which is about 63 miles or right around there. My longest distance to, so far has been 76 miles. I haven't made 100 miles yet, but that's one goal that I want to want to achieve. Just haven't quite been able to get there. At 76 miles, I totally wimped out. If you can call 76 miles wimping out. <laughs> um, I, I'm also a black belt judo instructor. Now, one of the reasons I bring these things up is because most of the things that I do are iterative, whether it's refactoring or judo. You know, we know martial arts is a lifelong study, right? And, and definitely, I didn't jump off the couch and start running 100 miles or, or trying to run 100 miles. It's an iterative process. We get better at it over time. Uh, it's, it's, it's much the same way with our activities as developers. Um, you know, whether it's writing code and getting better at it over time, uh, evading project managers, uh, or of course, deployment. We deploy iteratively. As we're developing our code, deployment is something we have to do iteratively, and we get better at it over time, and hopefully we're using Jenkins or something along that line to automate that process. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Because when we're, when we're developing applications, web-based applications especially, usually there's a DevOps involved and a developer. So we have the dev and the DevOps. Generally, you know, sometimes the dev doesn't like the ops. Sometimes the ops doesn't like the dev. Um, maybe the developer is the DevOps. Maybe they have to, it's just one person doing it all. So uh, there's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of things that have to be synced, especially if you have two separate people. There's, uh, there's things that have to be coordinated. And 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 uh, you know completely taken care of with that, so that's where continuous delivery comes in. Continuous delivery, generally, it's not especially with what we work in in PHP. I'm assuming many of you work with PHP. Um, working with PHP, we're not working with just one thing. We're working with a web server. We're working with database server. We have a PHP. Uh, you know, a lot of different pieces to that puzzle. It's not just deploying one thing. When we're deploying code, sometimes we're also doing database migrations where we have to update tables in our database. Maybe we have to add data to our database. We have to do unit testing, maybe code quality checks, you know, using any of the PHP QA tools out there, things like that. So we're not talking about a single piece. There's a lot of moving parts. So uh, as we're provisioning servers and things, uh, we're not going to, uh, in this talk, I'm not going to really talk about provisioning servers. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this. This is going to deal mostly with the app. 
Um, so we're not going to talk about provisioning servers, although in my demonstration that I'm going to show you, I am actually provisioning servers um, you know, using Docker because it's nice and quick. We just create, you know, I create instances on the fly for my unit testing and things like that. Um, and we're not going to talk about integration of any type of monitoring, you know, whether it's Nagios or whatever you use for your monitoring or your application. I'm not really going to discuss that. We're going to stick with mostly the app and getting that deployed. We're going to be talking about Jenkins, continuous integration with Jenkins um, and, and using that as our primary tool. When it comes to deployment, how many of you are still using FTP? Be honest. I know there's a couple of you out there. Um, you know, because it's a web-based application, and oh, they're just, they're just not answering. I know there's more of them. <laughs> um, whenever it's a web-based application, it's so easy to say, oh, it's just FTP. Let me FTP it up. And, and oftentimes, we all start there. We all have our, our, our smaller applications, maybe still today, where we're doing FTP and things like that. So we're not necessarily doing our unit testing and our code quality checks and, and other items. We're just simply doing FTP. And that works. Not, but you know, it's, it's because it's, it, it's easy to do, right? We just open up our FTP client and, and, and move it up. However, in the case of large sites, and there are a lot of large sites out there with PHP, you know, a lot of companies with very huge applications. At Zend, we work with many large enterprise level customers. Um, you know, again, you can check our resources out there, and we, we list some of, our, some of our primary partners. We're dealing with a lot of large code bases. And by large code bases, I'm talking millions of lines of code. And in PHP, that's not trivial. You're not going to FTP up millions of lines of code. And, and you, know, you want to make sure that you're managing that really well. Simple is just not a solution for those types of situations. And what happens in the case of, of continuous deployment, right? There are companies who want to deploy, and not, I'm not talking about two weeks every week or something like that. I'm talking about customers who want to deploy five to seven times a day. Or maybe you're an Etsy that's deploying every 20 minutes. You know, and in those cases, FTP is just not, it's not feasible. You're not going to do that in order to keep your get your applications out there. It's not achievable through FTP. You really have to have automation at that point of some sort. And even if, uh, even if you aren't deploying quite that often, one of the things you want to keep in mind is as, with our applications, we should always be ready to deploy. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be deploying five to seven times a day. You might not even be deploying every week or, or even every two weeks. But you should, we as, as developers, we as uh, uh, DevOps, we should always be ready to deploy. Not that we're going to, but we should always be prepared to, right? What happens when you have a failure of a system? or maybe even multiple systems, you have to deploy. You have to be ready to deploy on an ongoing basis. So, so that's something that we should always be ready for to take off and run. So I'm going to cover some things here, some best practices, but there is no holy grail. There's no one-size-fits-all type solution because there's always so many bits and pieces that could be involved in an application. One application is not the same as another. It's not cookie cutter, especially in web-based applications where you have APIs involved, you have code bases, maybe you have some services behind the scenes, databases, things like that. So there's a lot of, de a lot of dependencies. Uh, you know, maybe your development team needs to coordinate with themselves. You have the application. Size of the application makes a big difference. Um, <clears throat> and also how you implement things. So in this talk, I'm actually going to give a demo. And in my demo, I'm going to have a few different layers in my infrastructure. One of the things we're going to be using is Git. Now, because I can never count on the, the Wi-Fi in a, in a conference, I'm going to use a local Git repository. Uh, but it could be GitHub. It could be Bitbucket, whatever you're using, uh, or, or some other version control. Again, I'm just naming Git ones, but it could be other things, Mercurial, uh, what have you. I'm just going to use a local Git repository here uh, or, and, uh, and, and work from that. I'm also going to be using Jenkins to do my deployment. It's, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to have things set up in there so it's synchronized and in, uh, in doing things in a step-by-step -step process. I'm also going to be using Zen Server. For those of you who haven't heard of Zen Server, um, you know, uh, I'm going to be using it because it makes the automation process a little bit more easier. It's not the only way to do things. There's other ways to do it, but Zen Server does have tools to make it easier for you. And, and I'm going to show you some of that. But uh, again, not to make this a commercial, but it, it's just easier to use, so I used it. Um, with Zen Server, it is a full PHP stack. It's, it's supported, and the nice thing is, is it's the same across OSs, whether you install it on Windows, Mac, Linux, what have you. 
um, it, it's going to be consistent across those code bases, so it makes it easy to implement into your environment. Oftentimes, you have developers using one, one type of system, maybe a Mac, maybe Windows, and then they're generally deploying to a Linux server, or maybe even an IBM mainframe, uh, and things like that. So again, we're, we're consistent across all those OSs. It also makes automated deployment much easier, as well as cluster management. So then you're pushing to one server instead of pushing to all your servers, and then you let Zen Server handle the rollout or the deployment amongst its different nodes in the cluster. And the nice thing about Zen Server is it's API enabled. It's build API first. So there's an API for us to leverage through Jenkins, so that way we can tell Zen Server, hey, do this, do that. And it's all done through the API. We don't have to rely on bash scripts and things like that. Not that that's a bad thing, but you know, it's much easier if you have an API, because then you can control your security of it through API keys and, and so forth. Um, so with Zen Server, there is also a GUI front end. It's a web-based GUI front end. But, uh, but we're not going to be using that in Jenkins. I'm going to display it so you can see the deployment actually happening. But uh, again, we're going to be using the API behind the scenes for that. Uh, as I said before, I'm not going to be using GitHub, though I would prefer to use GitHub. Uh, it's just the tool, a tool that I rely on quite heavily personally. But, uh, but because I can never count on bandwidth and conferences, I do use a local Git repository for this. And by local, I mean local inside the VM that I'm using in the demo. I'm not running. Um, I'm not running any web server or anything from my uh, laptop that I'm doing the presentation with. I actually do it from within a VM. I have, I have multiple VMs that I use during this. One VM runs Jenkins, also runs my source control, and, um, <clears throat> and also some scripts that enabled me to create the deployment packages for Zen Server. I have another, uh, another VM that is my testing environment, and then I have another, another three VMs that run a cluster so and another VM running MySQL for my, my metadata for the, for the cluster. So overall, I'm using about six VMs. And I'm also going to be creating about five or six Docker instances during the deploy deployment as well. And it's all really fast. It just happens just like that between them. And, and you'll see that. Uh, one of the other things I'm going to be using during the demonstration is PHP QA tools. Has anybody heard of PHP QA tools? If you're doing PHP, you should know about PHP QA tools phpqatools.org. There's a lot of different uh, command line tools out there you can use as PHP scripts. You can either download the FAR files and, and use it that way, or you can download the application. And it enables you to run different uh, reports and different other criteria against your code base. Uh, PHP units, one thing for your testing. There's um, uh, Here I'm going to be using pdpends, which pdpends does a lot of code quality checks for lines of code. Um, you know, do you have too many lines of code per function and things like that and gives you some benchmarks. There's a PHP lock. There's a lot of tools out there. You should check it out if you aren't aware of it. Um, in our daily basis, we should be leveraging those tools so that we have more insight into the code that we're creating. And hopefully it's not crap because then QA, the QA tools will let you know that. So uh, it's, just, it's just really good tools to help with that. Also, I'm going to be using Docker. Like as I said, we're going to be creating some Docker uh, instances to run my unit tests. I'm going to run the unit test through Docker. I'm going to have a MySQL database for the application to use. All that's going to be inside Docker. And um, it's nice and easy, right? Because then I can create those Docker instances, run my unit test, trash the Docker instance. I don't need it anymore. And, uh, and then just move forward with the deployments to the actual servers. Um, and that's how we're going to do it. And then, of course, after we get done with all the deployments, we then need to look at our app, and hopefully it deployed right. But if it didn't deploy right, you know, applications do break. Even with the most perfect deployment systems, our applications can break. It's not necessarily due to the deployment system, it's our code. Maybe our application, we forgot to include something uh, in the deployment, whatever. Then who do you blame? Well, part of deploying is not just the deployment itself, but it's also the analysis, the, the, uh, the root cause analysis of problems. We need to have visibility into what is going on. Jenkins allows us to do that quite easily because we can break out our deployment in steps. And, and based on those steps, we know which step failed. And it makes it easier for us to see that. Um, there's other tools available, too. And I'll show you some other things that we can use. Um, but, uh, but using Jenkins for that, we can find out what was broken, how to prevent it in the future, and know how to fix it. Uh, so that way it doesn't happen, and that uh, it doesn't happen again, and that needs to happen quickly. We need that root cause analysis very quickly because if things fail, if things break, 
We can't wait a day. We can't wait a week. We need to know now because it's pushing to our production systems in some cases. So we need to know it immediately. And when it does fail, we need to roll back. And we need to roll back fast. We need to roll back. I'm talking 30 seconds fast. If something breaks, you want to do it now. Um, in the case of some large customers, I know uh, Etsy, I use them as an example because they're pretty extreme. Um, they, they roll, when they, whenever they do their uh, de continuous delivery, they'll push out the servers, and, but they'll only push out to a small subset, and then they'll monitor those servers, and if they see the traffic start to dip down, they know they got a problem, they'll roll back immediately, and they save themselves, right? So it's important that we have that, that step. Now in the demo, I'm going to be using, not too trivial, of an application. I'm going to be using PIMCore. Um, PIMCore is a 500,000 line CMS. Uh, it's a very robust CMS. So we're going to be running tests against that and then we're going to de be deploying it. And again, I wanted to pick something that wasn't too hard to manage, but at the same time, I wanted to make it so it wasn't trivial either. So that way we're doing a real, uh, a real uh, nuts and bolts type of comparison. We're going to be running multiple jobs, and as you should be in your deployments, right? You need to check out the code from the, from the version control. It's not a matter of copying code somewhere and then deploying it. We want to do a checkout from version control, so that way we can control what version of the application we have, and it can be precise. We also want to do testing. In this case, I'm going to be doing unit testing. Maybe you're using BHAT and doing functional testing. Maybe you're using some other testing suite. Um, and then we want to do packaging because as we're deploying, you don't want to deploy file by file. You want to deploy a package and then let the server open up that package or, or, or on a, you know, extract it in some way and, and have it there on the server. And then, of course, we want to deploy to some sort of staging environment so that way we can do regression testing, make sure everything was working as, as we intended. And if it fails, roll back. Otherwise, we can push to production. Now, in my demo, I'm not going to push straight to production. Um, and the reason is, is because I, I personally like making that, uh, I mean, there's ways to automate it, of course. You could base it on your version control. Whenever a tag is created, then you flag it now. Let's go to production. There's a tag. That means it's good. Um, but I, I, prefer, I like to hit the button. And when it fails, I want to be there to know that it failed. So that I like to push the button myself. Um, but again, if, if, I would, if I were to want to push every 20 minutes or five to seven times a day, chances are I'd get tired of hitting that button and I would probably make it more automated. It's just me personally. And then after that, we'll see all the details. So in this, like I said, we're going to have, you see the instance of Jenkins here. Um, it's not real important to see the content of the screen, so don't worry that the, the print's a little bit small. I will blow that up when, when we need to. But so I've got, a, I've got an application here, and I've got the different steps for it. Actually, I do want to blow that up a little bit. All right. You can read that a little bit better now. Um, so I've got, I've got the PIM core application. Um, now, behind the scenes, I've already got my virtual machine started up on this, on this machine, but they're off screen. You don't need to see those. There's nothing to see. It's just, uh, it's just a, a VM that's running in the back end. Um, there's not, not even using GUI for that. And uh, so we've got the PIM core application here and the multiple steps for it. And I thought I could tilt that, but it doesn't work. Um, and, and in here, the, the first step we're going to do is the checkout. So that's the beginning of my process in this example. And and, and so that I could show this to you, I'm actually doing it manually. So if I click on Checkout Now, I can click on the Build Now link. And when I click on Build Now, it's actually going to kick off Jenkins. Now I'm going to go to a graphical representation of this. This is just a plugin uh, installed into Jenkins so, so we can visually see what's happening. At this point, it's checking out from the version control, from the source control, which is, again is a local Git repository on that VM. It's doing the checkout. After it does the checkout, then it's going to start packaging the application. It's going to run unit tests on the application. And it's also going to run pdepends. And if certain thresholds are not met in pdepend, it would fail. All right, but in this case, it's going to go through those. Now, as those are running, I'm going to click over here. Pardon me? I will have to get that name for you. 
Uh, I don't remember which one I installed. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of workflow plugins for, for Jenkins, and you pretty much just want to pick one that's good for you. There's a lot of different representations. Uh, and I'll, I can get the name for this one for you. Now, in, below there, you can see we actually have, this is in server screen, and you can see there's a deployed application there. Now, as we're going to deploy the testing, you'll notice that in Zen server, it'll actually change state. Right now, the state, if you look about the middle of the screen there, it says deployed right by my mouse. It'll actually change to staging. Uh, you can't see that? All right. Uh, is that a little bit better? Can you see it up there? Uh, Oh, wow. I wonder why it did that. Did that fix it? Or just brought the doctors back down? OK. Well, I mean, it, it, actually, that window is kind of unimportant. It's, uh, it, it, it was just showing you the status of the deployment happening in real time, but Jenkins showed us just as easily. Now you'll notice that, that there's green, the green bar on the left-hand side of each of the steps in the representation. That means that they were successful. We can see that the deploy to test was actually successful. There's a green bar there. And then after that success, it then went to archive application and, and put a green bar there because the application successfully deployed. Um, to uh, the testing environment, and, and therefore we want to create a package of that so we could push that pr to production. So at this point, we would run our, our test, our manual test, you know, our functional test uh, that we do in a browser or whatever the case might be. We just want to make sure, just to double check for a regression test, that things succeeded. We already ran our unit tests uh, or any other tests that we had going. Um, so we know those succeeded, but sometimes the unit test can pass, but we still miss some things, right? So that's where we still want to go in a browser and check some things out. Um, now you'll notice here I also have some other steps that we didn't use. Uh, one is a rollback step. So if it pushed to testing and it didn't work, then the rollback would automatically be triggered. Um, and then you'll notice out here to the far right, there's a deploy to production. And if things succeeded and our testing went well, then I would click into deploy to production, <clears throat> excuse me, select build now, and then it would do that push to production. Um, and, and so that's where I, I made that manual on purpose, so that way we could push. Um, now in this case, uh, pushing to production here is actually pushing to one server and Zen server is managing that out and deploying out to all the other nodes in the cluster. Um, <clears throat> So now let's say, let's say that, is that still deploy, just playing somewhat clear? You should be seeing a couple dark w squares. Oh, really? Yeah, I just switched desktops. Normally that works okay. Yeah, it's actually multiple windows. It's just, it's a whole desktop. Um, All right, well, regardless, let me go ahead and I'll, I'll log into that server. What I'm going to do is actually go in and break the code. So, all right. Yeah. So on my system, I'm literally just logging in via command line. I'm going to make changes to the code to make it fail. And then I'll kick over to the other screen again, and we'll kick off the deployment again, and we can actually see it fail, and then do the rollback. Um, all right. So yeah, or what I did, I just uncommented a throw exception. So it's going to throw an exception and cause a failure. And, uh, and like I said, it'll, it's just enough to uh, 
just enough to manually break it. And then we can see how that works. So are you able to see the browser window again? Most of it? Did that bring it back? I closed, I closed one of the browser windows, so. What's that? <laughs> it's so hard to see because I'm there and it looks perfect. Um, all right. <clears throat> Did that help or make it worse? All right. All right. All right, so I'm going to go into checkout, and I'm going to kick this off manually again. So we're going to kick off a brand new build. Uh, so when I click on Build Now, uh, it's kicked off. We can go over to the graphical representation and see it happening. It's, going to, it's doing the checkout from the version control. Again, nothing, nothing too extreme there, just a regular checkout from version control. And then uh, after it finishes that checkout, then it's going to go back through again. And, and package the application and run our unit tests for us. Again, we're waiting for that process to finish across, and then it gives us the green bar to let it know it actually happened. Um, and as it happens, we see the green bar is coming up. If you can see green. Yeah? No? Oh, did it? Wonder why it's doing that. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It's only one cable. Okay, so it pushed to deploy, but uh, but that failed, and then it automatically is going down to the rollback and the rollback finished rolling back. So what it does is when it deploys to the server, it fails, and then it tells the server, okay, now server deploy, go back to the previous state. Um, I apologize, you're not able to see that. Um, yeah, it's a shame the, the video's messed up on it. But, uh, but it is pretty remarkable. You know what, I'm gonna try this. Are you able to see anything? Are you seeing Jenkins? I wonder why that is. That's the, that's the wackiest thing. <laughs> that's crazy. All I did was move it from the right side of the screen to the left side. OK. Can you see it good now? Yeah. All right, good. Uh, so, so inside here, if we take a look at it, if I, if I look inside the checkout process and the configure, we can see actually the mechanisms behind the scenes of what, the, what that is actually doing. And, uh, and uh, we can see the file of where the, uh, let me adjust the size of that. Okay, still able to see it? Even though I zoomed in? Yeah, good. All right, so we can see the file repository. That's going to be the place where the Git repository exists on that server. And in this case, we're just using var repos and the PIM core is the name of the repository. Um, we're looking, we're doing a certain build number. Generally, I would make that more dynamic. In this case, I made it a little bit more static, um, static to get it done. And then, um, and then down below, we can actually see you know, the different projects to build, and we can tell that it's deployed. Now, we can also see what I'm looking for here is what we're cloning. So we're doing uh, where is it? Let me go into the other processes. That's quite unremarkable what it's doing. So um, when it comes to the unit testing, looking at the configure of the unit testing, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because in the unit testing, we're actually running commands, and in this case, we're do using Docker 
We're creating MySQL instances, and those MySQL instances are used as the database for the back end of the application so we can run our unit tests. Uh, so we're using Docker to kick those up, and then we, uh, we create the different database, database information, uh, username, password, what have you, and then we're kicking up another Docker instance to actually execute those unit tests. Um, and then looking at it, uh, the pdepend is much the same thing. In the pdepend, uh, again, we're creating Docker instance and, and telling Docker to run uh, the pdepend uh, container, create a pdepend container, and then uh, the command line uh, of what to actually do for pdepend. Those of you who do not use pdepend, Give it a try. I, I encourage you to, to check out the PHP QA tools. There's a lot of good tools out there. And then when we go, you know, that's just, that's using that. So we finished our test. We finished all that. Now we're getting ready to deploy the testing. And in testing, in this case, we're just, we used a regular server rather than a Docker instance. And so we're using the ZS client, which is a, a command line tool provided, so that way you can interface with the Zen server. Um, and using the ZS client, we're adding a target, we're telling it where to find the server, we're giving it the secret key, the API key, and telling it what to deploy, which is the package that we created earlier on. And we're just pushing that up to Zen server, and Zen server handles it from there. You know, once, you, once that push, package is pushed to Zen server, and again, that's why I use it, is because it's easy. I don't have to do all those different steps that you do actually on the server. You can cre create all that inside your package for Zen server, uh, whether it's database migrations, uh, creating directory permissions, things like that. You might need a directory permission for a cache directory or a temp directory inside an application, what have you. You can do all that uh, straight throughout the, the package that you create. Um, the package that I'm creating for Zen server is nothing more than a zip file. It's just a zip file with an extra XML uh, XML script included in there with the step-by-step -step process of what you want Zen server to do. So it's pretty cut and dry. Um, in a nutshell, I'm sorry, the, I mean, the screen wasn't working. I'd like to, like to have showed you a little bit more, but anyway, we did get that done. So, so as some resources, uh, you know, you can check out the Zen server, uh, you know, for the, for the server and automated. I mean, there's a lot with Zen server, right? You get debugging, code tracing, deployment, caching, uh, different monitoring rules you can activate for your application. I encourage you to check it out. Um, there's also a, uh, uh, we have a new product, uh, an another part of Zen Server called the Z-Ray Toolbar, uh, which actually I'd like to show that. So along the bottom here is a JavaScript toolbar that is actually injected by Zen Server, and the JavaScript toolbar enables you to see errors that are reported. Um, you know, different other code traces and things. So from a developer standpoint, you have everything at your fingertips. You're not having to go back and forth. You're not having to do echoes and prints and everything else. It's all right here in this JavaScript toolbar. Um, and it really enables us to, uh, really enables us to see some great information. Um, so, so please check that out. <laughs> um, you can find out more about the continuous delivery. We have a lot of resources out there for continuous delivery. At, uh, you can check it out at zen.com, go to our solutions, and look for the continuous delivery. Uh, we also have a lot of scripts that are freely available using Puppet, Chef, and some other things to help you uh, better, better uh, manage continuous delivery. That's all available out on GitHub. So there's a GitHub account, github.com slash zen hyphen patterns. Please feel free to check that out. A lot of open source code that we've just put out there freely for you to use. Um, some of it uses, uses Zen server, but we put a lot of scripts out there that you can use regardless. Um, again, some great resources. That is all I have. Uh, anybody who wants to talk to me afterwards, or if you want to sit down, I can show you the demos and we won't worry about the screens being black. And uh, I have some other awesome things that, uh, that I can share as well. Uh, again, my name's Adam Culp. You can find, I have a lot of scripts and a lot of things out on GitHub at Adam Culp. Um, you can find my blog at geekyboy.com. And uh, thank you for coming. <laughs>